Welcome back to our second match of day one of the 10th Alliance Tournament. We have here um, Solar Fleet versus Dead Terrorists. Solar Fleet, uh, a group that has done well in the last couple tournaments. Dead Terrorists, who have done traditionally extremely well in the tournament um, and weren't in last year. But uh, these, I expect this is going to be a great match. I'm joined this time by Lazarus Tellraven. Hi, Laz. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Uh, both these teams, like right we said, are long-time tournament teams. Uh, it's going to be really interesting how this plays out. And here starts the match. For Solar Fleet, we have a traditional uh, setup that was used a lot last year. Two Slepnirs, a um, Scimitar, and two Sabres. Yeah, you saw the Slepnirs come in at zero. You got all the DPS can try to get on top of those uh, rooks and get, that, get those jams out of the way. Yep, meanwhile, Dead Terrace has brought in our first ECM team of this tournament. Two Rooks and a Neros, two Enyos and a Mollus. The match has already begun and we're seeing DPS begin to be applied. A lot of E-War coming uh, onto everything except for the Scimitar for uh, the uh, Solar Fleet team. Which means that the Scimitar is probably going to be... Oh no, there you go, the Scimitar is now jammed. It looks like Dead Terrace is trying to just jam everything and then take down the Sabres first. Yeah, the, as more ships get uh, taken off the field, you're going to see those jams come a lot more stronger onto the Slepners, and they're just not going to be able to get the DPS out to uh, take down much. And there goes one of those Sabres. It's very interesting to see an ECM team is going to be especially effective against a team like Solars that doesn't use the full number of ships. One of the best ways to defend against an ECM team is to have your full set of ships. Um, and you could allowed six in these prelims, but Solar Fleet has only brought five, copying a setup that was popular last year. Just like Ravi said, you got to spread out those jams across six ships, and without those six ships, you have at least one ship getting double jam stacked. Um, we're seeing some DPS be applied to Bullet Tooth Rook for uh, Dead Terrace now. It looks like the Slavniers have gotten on top of him, but uh, he's tanking fairly well in armor at the moment. Yeah, you're not seeing any E War um, coming from the uh, the Solar Fleet side onto I Kill You, and that's having a big effect that they can't take that logistics out of the fight. Yeah. Um, logistics are especially powerful in these six-man fights where there's a lot less DPS than in the finals where we're going to have 12 people and all of those ships DPS. This is looking, uh, at the moment, pretty good for Dead Terrace. I'm not too surprised. Dead Terrace doesn't have a lot of people left. They've got like 24 or 25 in the whole alliance at this point. But that group of people is the same group that uh, led them to such strong tournament uh, performances in the past. you got people like uh, Larf and Bullet Tooth um, who, and Joder, who have been real tournament standbys for them. And I'm not surprised seeing them bring another strong setup this year. Yeah, which, it's very interesting though that you're seeing not much dying after that first saber. Uh, they, the scimitar itself is going about to be entering armor, so once that scimitar goes down, you're seeing a lot things die a lot quicker. But until mm -hmm. then, uh, it, you're just looking at the low, D, the low DPS of the rook side, but they yeah. have the jams to disable. Rooks can actually do quite a bit of DPS when you shield tank them and put BCUs on um, for extra damage, but these are armor tank rooks for the extra jammers, which means that uh, they aren't going to be doing great DPS. So taking down that scimitar, as we just saw. The they did is a great choice. It's going to allow them to slowly pick off the rest of the team while they keep the DPS jammed. You can watch and see these Slepnirs have almost never been unjammed. They're pretty much constantly uh, e ward And one thing that's very important to note is these Slepnirs are not using ECCM. We're not seeing an ECCM effect from them. That is one of the things you need to do in the tournament. You need to be able to pick your teams and design them to be able to take out ECM. If you do that, ECM is easy to beat, but if you don't, then you just get rolled. Yeah, that, that's, that's why you see just, they went, went for the couple of the frigates first, then they went for the rooks, and they weren't able to really do anything effectively just because they had no E-War, their main line of DPS was constantly jammed, and they were just really dead in the water when it came to that, once they hit armor, that logistics yeah. just wrapped everything up. With now the last Sabre down for Solar Fleet, all they've got is the two Slapnirs left. They've still got all the jams from both of those Rooks assigned to them. I really don't think they've got any chance of beating this Dead Terrace team. It looks like we're going to have a very strong victory for Dead Terrace. And with no points, unless a miracle happens, Solar Fleet is going to be in big trouble. Wins are important in these prelims, but points are even more important to a large extent. Points are what allows you to come back from a loss. If you lose a match but still get a lot of points, that means you can uh, still come back in the next weekend. But coming through the first round with no points at all, that pretty much knocks you out of the tournament. Yeah, just looking at how slow this DPS is being applied to the Slepner, if they would have had some sort of anti-E-War, uh, e they definitely could have uh, yeah. changed this match. 
if they'd, say, brought the full set of ships, maybe uh, brought in some frigates instead of uh, the sabers so they can use the full set, if they'd put ECCM on the Slepnirs, then this could have easily been a whole different match. But uh, as it is, it doesn't look like they've uh, really got anything that they can do. They're just going to sit there and slowly get picked apart by uh, this ECM team. I will also note that this is, as far as armor ECM teams go, this is a team that is really making best use of its points. They've got the Mollus for damps so that they can uh, use uh, targeting speed, scan res damps. Those mean that when you lock a ship, it takes you longer. So it takes longer for these ships to recover after being jammed. Um, and also they've got two Enyos, which do about as much DPS per point as anything in the tournament. Um, Enyos are really great ships this year. Yeah, I think the Enyo is just from doing a lot of the EFT tests, it's about 350 DPS depending on the fit. Um, and like you looked, you're talking about the mollusks, especially in logistics, if that logistics does manage to get out of the lock from the jams, those scan uh, res jams yeah. are going to be... Quite, it's going to take them a long time to recover. And by then they'll probably be jammed again. And we see Maktep Slapnir now down. Um, I will note, actually, one thing we didn't catch in local at the time, but uh, the last Sabre that died for Solar Fleet uh, died due to a boundary violation. So CCP Sreek got to press his big red button and blow someone up, so I'm sure he's much happier now. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> and now with just one Slepnir left, uh, it's just a matter of time, and we're going to see Solar Fleet uh, with a very difficult position. I, it's going to be very hard, almost impossible for them to come back. And Dead Terrorist is going to be in a great position. When you win with full points, it means as long as you get good points in your next match, you can still go through even after a loss. So we're probably going to be seeing Dead Terrorist here in the uh, final uh, two days, and as they had been in other tournaments that they've been a part of. They're a really strong tournament team with a lot of good tradition. Yep. All that's left on the field is the Solar Slepner for Solar Side. Uh, he's going to try and Extend the match a little bit, kite around. Uh, doesn't look like they have anything fast enough really to catch him. No, but those heavy missiles have enough range that they'll be able to slowly pick him apart. Or he may just survive until the end of the match, time-wise. But if he does, all he'll be doing is denying some points from uh, Dead Terrace. Yeah, it looks like they finally get some frigates on top of him. Let's see if they can get some tackle and just melt, melt them down. Yeah, that's another great thing about our overview here, the new one at the bottom, is that we can see if you look in the center of the overview that uh, you can see all the war effects applied to the Slapnir, and you'll see we now have a Scram and a Web on him. So he's going to be slowed down and the damage is going to be applied much stronger. Although that Enyo uh, of uh, Where is the Cake from Dead Terrace is very, very, very low right now into structure, but he may be able to pull it back, we'll see. Yeah, the Slumber is probably one of my favorite ships in the game, and just, just the amount of DPS as well as the EHP uh, from the Tech 2 uh, ship itself is just great for the role that it plays. It's just a shame that this one uh, we're, we're, it's always getting jammed out and couldn't apply that DPS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where is the cakes? Enyo is still surviving in structure, getting reps from his Aneros. Um, he's actually pulling back shields now, which means that uh, the uh, last Slepnir for Solar Fleet is not able to track him at all. So he's just managed to take a lot. He took a lot of damage coming in on the approach, but now that he's orbiting a 500, his SIG radius is low enough and his speed is high enough that the Slepnir just can't track him, and he's essentially invulnerable. It's a good position to be in for a frigate, especially considering <laughs> that he'll be doing a whole lot of DPS with blasters at the same time. Yeah, that afterburner with the uh, assault frigates is just a great utility, and the assault frigates probably, in my opinion, is going to be the most seen ship in this tournament. Yes, I think we are going to see a ton of them. I actually think this um, frigate is no, he doesn't look like he's using an afterburner, but he just got in close, turned off his micro warp drive, and that was enough. Uh, once you're in that close, it's very hard to be tracked, um, which means that uh, unless some kind of absolute mir miracle happens unless all of the uh, dead terrorist piles decide to fly out of the arena and makes Reeks very, very happy, man, that it's going to be a very clear win uh, full with full points for uh, dead terrorists. So this is uh, your first time commentating, Laz. How do you like it so far? Uh, it's it's definitely new. Uh, I know in the interview process, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. Uh, I was supposed to be a little bit here uh, earlier, but I was a little late. <laughs> but a little bit late than ever, I guess. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you here. This, I think, is going to be a great tournament, and uh, it's shaping up to be a great across the board. We've already had a couple of good matches, and uh, I think these matches have both been very... Uh, 
representative of what we're going to see a lot of in the six minutes. We're going to see a lot of assault frigs. We're going to see a lot of um, teams that use assault frigs as high DPS to then allow you to use things like large uh, battleships and ECM and, with, and have those points available. And with the uh, final ship for Solar Fleet down, we now have uh, the match over. Full points to Dead Terrace. And yeah, uh, so congratulations to them. ECM team's real strong setup. Uh, I'm sure we'll see a lot more of it later in the tournament. This ECM team, I think, is something that you wouldn't want to bring against a prepared opponent. A team that is prepared to bring EC to, against ECM, that has brought all of their ships, that is bringing ECCM, is going to be able to take it down without too much trouble. But if a team's not ready for it, if you're not prepared for ECM, if you haven't planned for it, then there's no way to beat it. Yeah, you, just run, you run into the problem of not having the DPS with the ECM set up, but if mm -hmm. your jams do get through, then they're kind of boned. Indeed. And we'll be getting to the next match as quickly as possible. Our next match is going to be Lone Star Partners versus Raiden, who are not disbanded. And uh, we'll have that coming up very soon.